Hi, this is David at TED IELTS, and today I'm going to teach you an important grammar lesson that could help you to improve your score for IELTS writing. Although it might seem difficult at first, the ideas that I will explain in this video will become clear to you by the end. Don't worry if you don't know the phrases subordinating conjunction or conjunctive adverb. To be honest, most native speakers don't know these terms either. In this video, you will see what they mean, and the important thing is that you recognize the ideas behind them. Doing this isn't nearly as difficult as you think, and it can have a big impact upon your IELTS score. In fact, I would say that it is essential for anyone who wants to score higher than band 6. To help you understand, I'll use lots of example sentences, and if you pay attention, then you'll get a good understanding of this whole concept by the end. If you just want to focus on a few key points, you can use the chapter titles below to skip ahead to the relevant section, but I do recommend that you watch the whole video if you want to get the most benefit from it. Also, there are subtitles available. If you find it difficult to understand me, you can turn those on. Okay, let's jump right into our lesson. Let's start with subordinating conjunctions. These are words that begin dependent clauses. You will easily recognize some of the most common ones. While, because, when, although, despite. There are many more, as you can see here. The important thing for now is to understand that these words and phrases begin dependent clauses. These are clauses that are fundamentally incomplete. They may have a subject and a verb, but they will not contain a complete thought. As such, they must be attached to an independent clause if we are to use them in a sentence. This independent clause will present a complete thought, with the dependent clause merely adding extra information to it. In this example, we have two clauses. The dependent clause begins with the subordinating conjunction, because. It provides a reason for the idea in the independent clause. While we are hungry is a perfectly fine sentence, we can give more information with the addition of, an, of a dependent clause. And that's essentially what dependent clauses do. They add more information to the idea expressed in an independent clause. And these are joined by subordinating conjunctions. We can see how this works by taking we are hungry and adding all kinds of ideas to it. It is worth noting here that whilst dependent clauses must be attached to independent clauses, they don't necessarily have to come first. We can change the order about. Note in the examples that there is a comma after the second set in the second sentence, but not in the first. Hmm, why is this? Well, when we put a dependent clause first in the sentence, it will be followed by a comma. When it comes second, there should be no comma. Okay, in review, what does a subordinating conjunction do? It begins a dependent clause. Now, let's look at our next term, the conjunctive adverb. Conjunctive adverbs also begin clauses, but they begin independent clauses rather than dependent ones. These also include some very common words and phrases, such as therefore, meanwhile, consequently, and furthermore. You will recognize these if you have done IELTS writing before because they are very common in formal writing like essays, and indeed there are many more than just these five. Importantly, they go at the start of an independent clause. In both of these examples, there are two independent clauses. In the first example, they are part of one sentence, and in the second, they are divided into two sentences. We can join them into one sentence only if the meaning is really clear and they are closely related. Conjunctive adverbs follow semicolons and full stops, that's periods in American English. They must be followed by a comma. These punctuation features are not hard to learn. When you recognize common conjunctive adverbs like however and therefore and meanwhile, you should know to place them after a semicolon or full stop and to follow them with a comma. But what happens when you make a mistake? Well, let's explore the confusion that occurs when we mix up subordinating conjunctions 
and conjunctive adverbs. We have now seen the functions of subordinating conjunctions and conjunctive adverbs, so we should be familiar with their differences. To put it as simply as possible, subordinating conjunctions begin dependent clauses and conjunctive adverbs begin independent ones. When you remember that, it is not very difficult to use them correctly. However, it can be easy to forget this because there are so many of each type. As such, it is quite common for people to confuse subordinating conjunctions and conjunctive adverbs like this. The problem here is that the writer has used although like a conjunctive adverb, but of course it is a subordinating conjunction. Most likely, he confused this word with however. These two words have quite similar meanings, but they are used very differently. Still, it is possible to use although here. To do this, we would need to figure out which of these clauses could realistically become a dependent clause. Either of them could technically become dependent, but it is more likely that we would do it with the first clause, like this. This is both grammatically correct and logical. It is also quite common that people use these words in basically the correct way, but then confuse some aspect of the punctuation. Even when you put although in the right place with the right meaning, you have to avoid accidentally putting a comma after it. This is simply not correct, and we need to remember that although is a subordinating conjunction, and so it should not be followed by a comma. I want to take a moment to teach you something a little bit advanced. If you have struggled to understand what I have taught you so far, then you should probably skip this section and go ahead to the conclusion, where I will review our lessons so far. However, if you have understood everything, then this advanced part might help you to avoid some other mistakes. In English, we often talk about the exception to the rule. This is because, although we try to make rules that are consistent and true, there are often other rules that sort of interrupt them. Previously, I said that we use conjunctive adverbs after a semicolon or full stop, but there are some occasions when we don't. Those are mainly when we insert a conjunctive adverb into a longer clause, such as in these examples. When we insert these words into the middle of a clause, we set them apart with commas. We could equally have put them at the start of the sentence with the usual punctuation, but sometimes we insert them into the middle for effect. I know, English is confusing, right? The same basic principle can be applied to subordinating conjunctions and dependent clauses. Whilst we cannot insert a subordinating conjunction into the middle of a dependent clause for effect, we might insert some other information that changes the punctuation to seemingly break the rules, like this. When we insert information into longer clauses, we set it apart using commas. That means we have followed when with a comma, seemingly breaking our earlier rule about not putting a comma after a subordinating conjunction. However, no rules have really been broken. We're just using several grammatical rules together, making it appear that way. Subordinating conjunctions and conjunctive adverbs may have similar meanings, but they are different parts of speech and thus they are used differently in sentences. Whilst they cause a lot of confusion for IELTS candidates, the rules for their use are actually quite simple. Primarily, you should remember that one golden rule. Subordinating conjunctions begin dependent clauses, and conjunctive adverbs begin independent clauses. This is the most important thing. Beyond that, you need to remember a few basic rules of punctuation, namely that conjunctive adverbs follow semicolons and full stops and are then followed by commas. Subordinating conjunctions, meanwhile, are not followed by commas. Once you can remember that, it will become much easier to get the rest correct and increase your score for IELTS writing.